Well, I, I thought we played with good energy. I thought we shared the ball, obviously. And I think just a little subtle thing, getting Mikey Bikelja in the game, got an extra shooter in the game, which spread it, spread it out a little bit better for us. And then Chad Baker celebrated his birthday in style. Go ahead. Are you ready? Coach, did, um, did kids read the paper when you said they couldn't shoot um, the other day we talked to us? Because they, they're like they uh, caught on fire today. Well, I knew we had to get out. In, so what I did when we first lost those guys is I kind of pulled the reins in a little bit and tried to play a little more conservatively until we could get our feet settled. And I knew we had to run the break more to get more easy baskets. And we did a much better job of moving the ball and – finding the open man. And then Chad Baker's a talented guy. Like he, he's a talented guy. So like when he gets on a roll, man, he's going to let him fling in there. Keith, speaking of uh, reading the paper, did Chad, and, did you and Chad have a talk after you saying on Saturday night that he needed to quote, put his big boy pants on? And um, did he, res do you think that his performance was a response to you kind of saying he needed to mature a little bit or was that just him being him? Well, I talk to him every day about being more disciplined, you know, not losing his enthusiasm, but having better discipline. And, uh, but we have a good relationship. Not all of us, not all of them listen to me like he does, but he, he's been good with me. And uh, like, he drives me nuts sometimes, but he, he generally listens. He's, he's, He's just scratching the surface, though. He, he's a virgin right now. He's a guy that, he's a guy that should be the best defender, should be the best passer, should be the best ball handler, should be the best shooter. And and as crazy as it sounds, he's underachieving. But again, like I have high expectations for talented people, so that's how I see it, right? And when he when he finally decides he's going to start working at this game, and put everything he has into it you'll see something even better than this because he's got good instincts and he's confident as hell. Sorry. Uh, you're good. To follow up, how valuable is it to your team when he can really be on like he was against Rhode Island last week? You should, you know, probably just play him 30 minutes every Wednesday, it seems, right? That's when well, that's, his team that, out. that's part of, that's part of becoming better. So, like LeBron's going to be good Wednesday and Saturday, and Chad will be good Wednesday and be average on Saturday. So, again, like I just named him in the same sentence. So that's what I expect from him. Pretty um, heavy gauntlet there, Coach. Um, what makes you believe that the kid can build up to that? And I guess we can talk about some, some other players as well. Well, again, I don't think he's really worked at the game like he should yet. And he's got to become even a more solid individual, both on and off the court. Less moods, you know, more, uh, more consistency. But the good thing is he generally listens. He doesn't always do, but he generally listens. So when I, when I have good feelings about my relationship with a guy, I feel like I can get him to do what I want eventually. Like I was, I was killing him tonight. He's he's flinging him, flinging him in, but I'm yelling at him. That's two in a row. He drove you. Like he's got to have more pride. Like if you're a great player, you have to have more pride. But he's willing to listen. I, I give him that. I I like him. Keith, you mentioned uh, earlier when you first started at Duquesne, you had a lot of games that were lopsided that you used as teaching moments, and tonight looked like much of the same. Just how was it? getting yourself and your assistants and your bench engaged for all 40 minutes and the reserves may be learning from that. Well, I'm, I'm proud of what our guys have done. Like the one thing I can say is every single game that we've played, we've tried our, we've tried our hardest. We haven't been good every night, but we try really hard. And as long as we try really hard, we'll win our share of games because again, we, we got some puppies out there. They're just learning. They're young. So we still have a lot of things that we have to clean up, but we made some strides tonight. Now, can we do it again the next night? Can we do it every day in practice? You know, and, you know, Marcus and Mike continue to play better. Tavian's got a little bit of a bad back. I think he'll play a little bit better than he has. 
But, you know, we need him to play at a higher level. But Tyson Acuff was really good tonight, too, which was encouraging. Keith, are uh, uh, Murphy and uh, Kelly injured? Pardon me? Are Murphy and Kelly injured? They didn't play tonight. Murphy wasn't here. Murphy uh, had a death in his inner circle. So he did not make the trip with us. And I'd rather not comment about uh, Amari. But he's with you? He's with the team? He's on the trip. I like Amari, but – but. Gotcha. Keith, what did you like from Mikey Kelly tonight, his first uh, call start? Well, what I like about him is he's – he's – uh. He's like the tortoise and the hare. You don't think he's very good, but he does a lot of uh, he does a lot of winning things. He's very good on the ball defensively. He's strong as an ox. He gets the ball to the right place. Uh, he shoots it when he's open. He doesn't take bad shots. Uh, he's he's a guy that's really going to help us because you still have to guard him too because he'll shoot the ball better than that too. He's just a winning guy. And I've known it all along, but the month the month off hurt him. He's got to get in better condition. But he's a good passer. He's a good ball handler. He's tough. He shoots the ball. He's not scared of the moment. He's had to work for everything he's ever gotten. He's, he, he tells me this all the time. He's always been the worst player in his family. His sisters were better. Sin was better, right? But he's, he's had to work, and now he's going to become a really good player because he's had to work for everything he's got. Keith, after we got over, got over the Zoom call, obviously Jeff Neubauer was let go by Fordham. Just intangibly, how much did that change, if anything, what you were factoring and just maybe what you were expecting from them given that circumstance? Well, we were a little nervous about it. You know, I'm sure if, if something happened to me, our guys would play their behinds off too, just happy to get rid of my nagging behind, right? So. Uh, you know, we're a little nervous about it because Fordham plays hard, and we have, we've had no blowout games against them until now. Now, they blew us out once in Pittsburgh. So the game surprised me, but, again, we shot the ball in. You know, whether that was an aberration or not, I really don't know, but we made 14 threes, which we haven't done in about six games combined sometimes. So, you know, so I think Jeff Newbar is a really good coach. I really do. I – I played against him when he was at Eastern Kentucky. Uh, I think he had trouble keeping players here for whatever reason, whether it's systemic, whatever. And when you lose your good players here, you're not winning. And so that's what's happened to him. But he's made him competitive every night. Ethan, your experience when, when a team wins a game by, uh, by such a decisive margin, how does that uh, factor going forward? How do they react to that? I think it's good for us. I think you know uh, we got to we have to use it to catapult into becoming a better team, a more consistent team. You know, a team that you know starts to believe in themselves a little bit. I mean, obviously we had to have some self doubt, me included, right? We're playing a bunch of guys that haven't played. So, you know, I, the thing I did know is we're playing with everybody in the league. So I knew we could. I know we're competitive. It's just I didn't know whether we could win consistently you know what I mean like you just don't know until you make strides but now I really believe like if everything goes right and we can show some maturity and we grow up we could we could do some good things we've seen Mike Hughes the scorer we've seen Mike Hughes the blocker the rebounder you mentioned his leadership six assists tonight which was probably I think his best in a Duquesne uniform Keith just what allowed him to see the court so well tonight well, he's an unselfish guy offensively. He he likes to pass. And, you know, most of those post guys, they have uh, negative assist to turnover ratios, below one, right? More turnovers than assists. But he's gone now two years now with, with a pretty high assist to turnover ratio. Our biggest thing is getting enough shooting on the floor with Mike and Marcus. And I thought Marcus passed the ball well, too. Getting enough shooting on the floor with Mike and Marcus to – People aren't sitting in their lap the whole game. That's key for us. 
Keith, in the past, um, you know, you'd mentioned Tyson um, playing a bit apprehensive tonight. It looked like he uh, was a lot more comfortable, obviously had a big game. How much of an impact can he have for your team moving forward um, with uh, improved confidence? Well, he's a great young man, first and foremost. So you're talking about the highest character, high quality, guy that cares about winning. So most of his is just learning the system and getting in better condition. When that happens, I think you'll see a guy take a huge jump. He, he reminds me a lot when I had Charles Thomas, who's now my assistant coach. Carl was a little more ready to play than Charles, but I knew Charles was going to be good. And mostly because he cared about winning, he cared about his teammates, he had good ability. So I, I, I believe that Tyson will be very similar to Charles. You guys done with me? You want to talk to the birthday boy? Yeah, we, ha we have Chad here as well. Thanks, Coach. All right. I sang him happy birthday after the game, too, and my voice is one of the worst of all time, so he got what he deserved. Safe well, trash, what's next? <laughs> Hello, everyone. All right, Chad, you're on. Happy birthday. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll save the bad singing for Keith. <laughs> they did. They did sing me happy birthday after the game. Chad, How much uh, fun did you have tonight, Chad? Oh, it was amazing. Every single second I was in the court, in the bench, cheering for my teammates, uh, hearing what Coach is saying. Every time I'm out here, it's just an amazing, great time. Chad, uh, your coach was vocal on Saturday about how he, he gets a little upset when you would get technical fouls or flagrant fouls. It sounds like he's someone who is very hard on you, but he just compared you. He just put your name in the same sentence as LeBron James. Can you talk about your relationship with, with Keith and how him pushing you is making you a better player? Oh, yes. Yeah. So when I first got to Duquesne, Coach Demmer was – he first he, – he literally told me this. So do you want to be great? I'm like, Coach, I left everything back home to make it. He was, now. I'm really going to be harder on you. I'm like, Coach, do what you got to do to take me to that next level. And if it's to yell on my face, even when I'm right, I'm, I'm going to – take it because at the end of the day he just wanted me to become better I cannot take that person so he's pretty hard even though sometimes he's not he, he's not 100% right but always he always has some some true stuff to say Did, um, what was it from the three-point line because it wasn't this you you shot well too what was it about you guys tonight because previously the shooting hadn't been there what was different tonight um, just to, today, guys, just really felt good today in warm-up shooting and earlier today in practice. And we just came out here confident and just let them go. And thank God today there was falling in. Got to keep it like that to, from now on. How does something like this help you build confidence going forward? Like just seeing the ball go in, reconnecting, how, how does that kind of help you? Oh, it is probably one of the greatest feelings ever. When you let that go and it looks perfect and goes in, it just hypes you up, seeing your teammates going crazy for you in the bench. Your teammates riding in the court, just let's go, keep it going, keep it shooting, just keep motivating me. And they get me the ball in the perfect spots, and I'm going to just let them go. Chad, you guys have played a lot of close basketball games over the past month or so. How nice is it to uh, – have a not close game where in the fourth quarter, you know, you don't really let your foot off the gas, but you know, you have a win and you can just kind of focus on playing the game and having a little bit more fun. I mean, it is actually a good feeling because how you say it, all these closed games, it's going to give me a heart attack one day, just see you in the bench or in the game. Like you want to be, you know, in the per like the most finest point that you don't want to mess up anything because a whole turnover or something might flip the game around. So it was really nice just coming out here, you know, having fun in the bench. And I got out. All the, our players got a chance to go in, and it just felt great. Everybody in the team was happy, coaching staff to general to managers. So it felt great, to be honest, having a good lead. What is it like for you, Chad, just seeing a collective level of happiness, whether it's 
Mikey's three and you guys have your hands up before the shots even up knowing it's going in to having Jed or having Jalen come in and just hoping that ball goes in and getting that energy up on the sidelines. Just what is it like having that energy so high knowing that that next play looks like it's going to be a successful one? Oh, always have confidence on my boys. Every time that ball, they let it go. I'm the first one or second one to be up there with that three or any play. Because I just, we work hard every day, get extra shots up. And I feel like every time they shoot the ball, is really going to go in. I mean, at least we shoot to go in. <laughs> Chad, you're one of many freshmen who get key minutes on this team. What's it like to be part of a group that, I mean, ideally, you guys are going to be around here for a while and hope to do some special things. What's it like to get off to a good start with your freshman class? Uh, it felt great when we first got here. Uh, we, the freshmen, like, you know, we had a little talk between us and we was like, hey, guys, we came here. And let's be honest, we came here not to sit on the bench. And then now whatever happened during the season, now we got this opportunity. It's like, OK, now we literally worked our whole lives to be here. OK, now we're here. Now we're zero again. Now let's 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 get this going now so we can build that on throughout the years that we're going to be here and have a good base. How old did you turn today? Big 21. All right. Hey, yes, yes. good birthday. Oh, yes. Amazing birthday. That it for Chad? Yep. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Chad. Thank, Thank you so much. Have a great day.